time series let's quickly go through the outline for this lecture first we'll learn what time series is we'll look at the component of time series we will look at how to use time series in its effective form and lastly we'll talk about moving averages time series can be used to analyze historic data establish any underlying trend seasonal variations within a certain data then that data will be analyzed to establish a certain pattern or movement it can be on the ascendancy it can be on a descendancy for a period of time this pattern can be used to make inferences or decisions pertaining to the future so if you know that one particular month has increased sales when that month is coming up in subsequent years you prepare to take advantage of that increase lastly time periods may be days weeks and months as we said earlier there are set of figures or data or information that are gathered to establish a trend so it can be information or data within a day that is analyzed weeks month etc let's look at the components the first we'll look at is trend a trend is the underlying long-term movement over time values of data recorded it does not have to be linear or predictable sometimes we refer to trend as changing directions where they might go from increasing trend to a decreasing one. In your business's activity, sales increases in one month and drops in a particular subsequent month and picks up again and drops again. You will be able to establish a pattern, what we described earlier, and that is what we call a trend. The next one is seasonal variations. So seasonal variations are short-term fluctuations due to different circumstances. So you can say that sales of hoodies will increase in colder seasons or rainy seasons then attires that are lighter or exposes the body to the weather or sun will have its sales increasing in sunny seasons or in summer seasons you know that every year there's going to be cold seasons and sunny seasons it's expected and they are short term the next is cyclical variations these are medium to long term changes and results caused by circumstances which repeat in cycles so a cycle occurs when the data exhibits rise and falls that are not of a fixed frequency so these fluctuations are usually due to economic conditions so the duration of this fluctuation usually lasts for two years at least many people confuse cyclical to seasonal variations but they are really quite different so if the fluctuations are not of a fixed frequency then they are cyclical However, if the frequency is unchanging and associated with some aspect of the calendar, then the pattern is said to be seasonal. So in general, the average length of cycles is longer than that of seasons. And the magnitude of cycles tend to be more variable than the magnitude of seasonal patterns. So cyclicals are long-term in nature. A business can experience some low turnout or low sales during its inception. Then it grows in a particular period then it survives for a very long time. Maybe when it starts to experience some competition, it starts to dwindle. Those are expected. They are not unexpected, but they are something that is not out of the blue, but it does not happen often. That of seasons are expected and nothing can be done about it because they are bound to occur and most of the time due to human behavior or natural occurrences. The last is residual variation. So these are non-recurring random variations this may be caused by unforeseen circumstances such as change in government a war technological change or a fire hence these are non-repetitive let's look at the formula for time series so for time series it is y equals to t plus s plus c plus r so y is the actual time series what we seek to achieve the t is the trend S is the seasonal component, cyclical component, and lastly is the random component. We normally do not include a random component in it because of its non-repetitive and non-expected situations. Okay, so this is an example of a time series. Like the period is the X axis, the Y axis can be the sales depending on the need of the business, what the business wants to analyze in the particular period. It can also be revenue, cost, etc. So you see that in January, it rose, gets into February, 
dropped to March, increased in April, increased further in May, and dropped in June. So you can establish a pattern and it puts some causal explanations to why those behaviors were realized and then make necessary decisions for the future. Let's quickly discuss moving averages. So this is used to analyze historic costs to establish trends, seasonal variations within a set of reports or data that has been derived, which can be used to make necessary decisions for future activities of the business. Moving averages is one of the tools to help us get to that. So the steps will be first to establish a moving average. We'll be looking at it in a test of understanding. The second will be to establish the trend, then finally establish the variation. Let's test our understanding. So below are the sales for the year 2022 for Adepa PLC. So for January was 130,000, February was 150, March 180, April 140, May 155,000, June 185,000, July 140,000, August 166,000, September 190,000, October 150,000, November 177,000, December 200,000 dollars. The first we'll do is to draw a table. So we put it here, give them headings, the month, the sales value, and then we put the sales figures also here. The next is to establish three months moving average. To do that, we'll first have to get the total for the three months. You don't always have to use three months. You can choose two, three, four, but we decided to choose and use three in this example. So for the three months, the total will be for January, February, and March for 460. February, March, and April will give us 470. March, April, and May will give us 475. And we are putting the totals in the middle of the three periods that we choose. Okay. So for April, May, and June, it's 480. So we put it in the middle, which is for May. May, June, and July will give us 485. June, July, and August will give us $496,000. July, August, and September will give us $501,000. August, September, and October will give us a sum of $507,000. September, October, November will give us a sum of $518,000. And lastly, October, November, and December, the sum of their individual sales will give us $527,000. We now move to find the three months moving average. Here, we will pick the three months total. Then we divide by three because we are using the three months moving average. So we start with the first moving average. We pick the 460 divided by three gives us 153,000. 470 divided by three gives us $156,000. 475 divided by three will give us $158,000. 480 divided by 3 will give us $160,000. 485 divided by 3 will give us $162,000. 496 divided by 3 will give us $165,000. $501,000 divided by 3 will give us $167,000. $507,000 divided by 3 will give us $169,000. 518 divided by 3 will give us $173,000. Then lastly, $527,000 divided by 3 will give us $176,000. We'll now move to establish the trend. What we'll do is that we'll look at the movement of the averages. For January, there was no moving average. For February, because there was none in January, there wouldn't be any figure to compare. So then we come to March. The movement of the average of February of $153,000 to $156,000 is 3. The movement of March to April, that is from 156 to 158, is 2. Movement of April to May, that is 158,000 to 160, is 2. They keep increasing, so they are in positives. When we come to June, the trend had an increase of $2,000. That is 160 moving to 162. For July, the trend is that there was an increase of $3,000, 162 to 165. For August, there was an increase in sales of $2,000, so was 165 to 167 In September, there was also an increased trend of $2,000, 
167 to 169. October had an increased trend of $4,000. The sales of 169 jumping to 173. November, the trend was $3,000. The sales increasing from 173 to 176. There is nothing to compare the moving average of November to, so we leave December to zero. So the trend is that the sales had an increase month on month. So some increased by 3,000, some increased by 2,000. Now let's move to the seasonal variation. We have two models, additive and multiplicative. So with the additive model, we establish the seasonal variation by finding the difference between the sales and the moving average. So for February, the seasonal variation is negative $3,000. It means that the variation affected sales to drop. So it's the sales of $150,000 with a moving average of $153,000. For January, because there's none to compare with, we leave it blank. For March, it's $24,000, which is an increase. The sales of $180,000 was higher than the moving average of $156,000. In April, the variation caused it to drop by $18,000. The difference between one forty dollars and one fifty eight. dollars in May, a variation of negative five thousand dollars. In June, sales of one eighty-five thousand and a moving average of one sixty-two thousand will cause an increase of twenty-three thousand dollars. In July, sales of one forty-five thousand is below the moving average of one sixty-five thousand, which will definitely lead to twenty thousand negative seasonal variation. August, sales of one sixty-six thousand is below. The moving average of 167,000, which will lead to a declining seasonal variation of $1,000. September, $190,000 of sales is higher than the moving average of 169,000. It will lead to a seasonal variation of positive 21,000. October, a sales of 151,000 with a moving average of 173,000 will lead to a declining seasonal variation of $22,000. November, it had a sales of $177,000 and its moving average was $176,000. It will cause a positive seasonal variation of $1,000. In December, because there are no figures to enable the comparison, it is nil. Let's look at the second model, which is the multiplicative. Here, what you do is that you will pick the sales and divide by the moving average. And that will give you the percentage. If the percentage is less than 1, it's a reducing seasonal variation. It means that within that period, the season caused a negative effect to the business's activity. If the variation is more than 1, that is a positive variation. So for January, there was none because there is no moving average to divide the sales. For February, the seasonal variation declined. That is 150 divided by 153. In March, it leads to a positive variation. That is 1.13. In April, there is a retrogressive variation. In May, the variation was a negative. The decline was just 0.03. In June, the sales was higher than the moving average. So it gave a positive seasonal variation of 14%. That is the extra after the one. July will give a negative seasonal variation of 0.88. August give a seasonal variation of 0.99, which is a drop of 0.01, which in other words is 1%. September give seasonal variation of positive 12, 1.12 is equivalent to an increase or an excess of 12%. October give a declining seasonal variation of 0.87. November will give a positive variation of 0.01. So we are going to demonstrate how you can use this to predict future activities or make decisions concerning the future. Let's test our understanding. We are now supposed to find the sales for May 2023. The activities or the question we solved were for the year 2022. So now that we have derived some figures for them, let's look at how we can solve for 2023. To get the sales for May 2023, you can pick the sales for the latest month, which is December 2022. We add the established trend. Then we add the variation for the similar month in the previous year or the 
year that we already know to get the sales. The sales for December 2022 is $200,000. So the trend we calculated will be 12500 So the trends were in mostly 2000 and 3000 So we picked two of them, which will give you 5000 and we divide by two, which is the two five. The five is the number of months between the period we are solving for and the latest period. We are in May. From December to May is five months. January, February, March, April, May. So there will be movement of 2,500 five times to get to the May figure. The variation in May 2022 was negative $5,000. You can refer to the table. So together, May 2023 sales will be $200,000 for December sales plus the trend of 12500 plus a negative 5000 variation which will lead to 207500